All right, so why the sandbar over some of the other K-trucks that are out there or K-vans? So let me start off by saying, you have an eight gallon fuel tank on this uh, for longer distances. So you're gonna be stopping for fuel less. Not that that's a huge deal because they are incredibly fuel efficient, uh, but the eight gallon fuel tank uh, makes them uh, more sought after in Japan. Additionally, it has a higher top speed um, or consistent top speed. So more people say that um, you can uh, comfortably drive it on the highway at 55, 60 miles per hour. So I think that's a huge plus, especially because these are sm such small vehicles. I'm not even comfortable taking them on the highway most of the time. But when you when you have a vehicle that's known for being a little bit more comfortable on the highway, it, it's uh, it's reassuring. So one of the other things, your rear suspension it has control arms, so it's independent in the rear and the front. So you have coil springs front and rear instead of leaf springs. A lot of the trucks have leaf springs on the back without weight in the back. They're very, very stiff. Um, they kind of bounce around. So you have independent rear uh, suspension. In the cab, so the cabs are well known for having more space than the other K trucks, uh, just based on uh, leg room height in general. So if you're a taller individual um, and you're considering one of these K trucks, the sandbar is gonna have the most room. There is a, a couple of models that have special jumbo cabs. Um, they're very hard to find, so I highly doubt you're gonna find one of those to meet your needs as a tall individual. You just wanna go ahead and settle down with a sandbar. A check is you wanna check how loose or stiff the steering is. This one's normal. Uh, I'm actually looking down at the wheel and tire to make sure there's not, like there's a direct correlation between the wheel turning and the uh, tires moving, and that's because of the tie rod ends and other steering components in the front that loosen up on some of these trucks. So your brake fluid reservoir is gonna be under this cap. You wanna make sure that there's actually brake fluid in it. Um, they're pretty good at the ports about making sure that there's brake fluid in these trucks when they inspect them, so it's pretty rare. If you find one that's got a low level, check all the brake lines and make sure none of them are, have cracked. Uh, a lot of these trucks and vans don't come with tachometers. This one was put in. It's a pretty easy mod to do. Uh, I believe it's a green or a blue wire up underneath the dash that you tap into uh, to get a, a tack signal. Uh, with that said, you want to check the seats. A lot of the seats are, are cracked or torn. Uh, same thing with the Acti models, they're cracked or torn. Uh, in this case, this guy has uh, some nice seat covers on here. He even has the headrest covers on this one. This uh, light area, so this is actually the cargo light electronics on the outside. So that's the cargo light on the truck. This kind of looks like a, a US 110 outlet. I promise you it's not. <laughs> a lot of people are kind of baffled by it. It's actually skinnier uh, than a 110 outlet would be anyways. But yeah, there's nothing to it. It's just how that was made um, for things to clip into. So. You wanna check the headliner on these trucks and the door card. So this headliner only has one little blemish here. That's not a big deal. Uh, the visors, a lot of the visors are kind of broken on these. These ones are pretty good. They're a little dirty, but. So this is a round headlight version of the uh, Subaru Sandbar truck. Uh, it's also a JA model, which stands for uh, Japanese agricultural model. So, and it's got the four wheel drive sticker. I'm not sure if these stickers are actually correct on this truck. They look a little different on some other ones. In fact, some of these decals are kind of raised on some of the other JA models. So I'm not sure if this is a true JA model or not. Um, there are subtle ways to tell, but that's okay. The JA models are kind of rare anyways. Um, this one also has a gas cap on the outside right here, a locking gas cap. Uh, that's gonna be different than the Acties. The Acties have a fuel cap just underneath the bed for the trucks. Uh, this one has a cabin vent on this side to let positive air uh, come out, especially if you have the AC running, it'll push the positive pressure out of the truck and kind of vent smells and, and hot air out. Um, this one has the back rack. A lot of these are pretty rusty. Uh, they're pretty easy to take off though and clean up. There's two 10 millimeters on each uh, top side. And then there's uh, a 12 millimeter down in, in this lower location here. Um, that button switch up top right there is for your cargo light. That's how you turn that light on and off. Uh, usually when the parking brake is um, pulled or put down, as in you're gonna drive the truck, that cargo light will automatically turn off. Some people bypass it, 
but it will actually uh, give you a brake light on the dash if you bypass that ground on the um, e-brake so that your cargo light will work all the this time. This guy has a nice little chart here uh, to convert kilometers to miles per hour. It's kind of sweet. He also has a radio in it. This model, uh, I put uh, power locks in it for him as well. So he has a little remote he can open and close it. He also has uh, a decent set of wheels and tires. The Subaru Sandbars have a lug pattern of 4x100. So a lot of Honda wheels will fit it. Um, there's actually quite a few, um, quite a few wheel options for it. Additionally, it uh, has, I believe these are 15 by 7 wheels and the tire size of a 195-50-15 on it. They do poke. I call this the skateboard look where they poke out a little bit. That's not legal in all states. Uh, in fact, this guy keeps his factory wheels and so that he can uh, pass inspection because we do have a state inspection here in Hawaii. These trucks are more and more common here. Um, and it's kind of cool. It's kind of nice to see them out on the road. Um, they're a blast to drive, so if you're considering a sandbar, uh, whether it be the truck or the van, I would highly encourage it. They're a ton of fun. Just be careful on the highway. Um, the sandbars are more sought after in Japan, and usually they'll have higher miles on them because they have a larger gas tank. Uh, they're well known for where, um, for going long distances without issues. They can hold higher speeds more comfortably. They are more comfortable. So when you're inspecting this to purchase one, you want to check all the door jams for rust. So in this case, this one has no visible rust, but you want to look for rust in the, so this has a little bit of surface rust. So this is nothing crazy here as well, but this happens because everyone slides in and out because these trucks are so low to the ground. Um, but you want to look in all of these areas for rust inside the door jams on the vans. You want to look in the track area around uh, the sliding door. You want to make sure that the uh, there's no rust inside the where the sliders are. Um, that's very common to find holes in the areas and sometimes you'll see uh, spray paint over the top of them. So you want to make sure that uh, that it hasn't been sprayed over and there's not hidden rust in there. Uh, you want to check the roof. So this one has a couple small surface rust bits on top of it but nothing too crazy. A lot of times you'll find dents on the roof of the sandbars. Um, you wanna make sure it doesn't have any huge gaping holes in the top, otherwise you're just gonna get water on the inside. So I have heard before, and I can't verify this, I have done it once, but I have heard that you can hose out the interior on the JA model trucks without hurting anything. Just keep in mind there's a fuse panel um, to the left of the steering column that you wouldn't wanna get wet. So uh, the sandbar models, have a factory snorkel, um, especially the square headlight ones. Um, there, it's in this area on the uh, left-hand side of the truck or the passenger side of the truck. And what it does is it has a scoop that goes into the frame and it goes all the way back to the back of the truck and there's a tube that connects the air box to the frame on the truck. So if you're driving through a lot of water, uh, it, it should pull from the frame first uh, before you were to suck the water up. So the Sandbar USA stickers that are on here, um, that's not very common. You won't see that very often. You can buy those online, uh, but the only trucks that would have come from the factory with those are the Sandbars that were designed for the US market. Yes, they sold the Sandbar to Disney under contract. So Disney has a bunch of Sandbars on their property that are USA Sandbars. It's kind of funny. Um, the newer Sandbars, they're, I say newer, the ones that aren't 25 years old yet, you can see some of those on the road in Florida. Um, I'm not 100% sure how they got that legal. Uh, I've heard of other K trucks being legal in Florida as well that are newer than 25 years, but you know, such as Florida. Uh, you wanna check the spare tires on these. They sit above the frame. In fact, the bed on these uh, sandbars sit higher than uh, most of the other beds on the other K trucks uh, in comparison to the frame. This makes working on a lot of the coolant lines, things like that kind of easy. It makes it really easy to inspect things. There's that massive, I believe, eight gallon fuel tank on the other side of the truck. Um, this truck has the frame coated, which is most of the time a good sign. If it looks really high quality like this one, then it's probably not covering up rust. Um, if it looks like it's just kind of sprayed on randomly, especially glossy, um, it's probably covering rust. So someone probably just spray painted over it to hide um, the issues that uh, it was having. So. 
This uh, surface rust on the hinges for the bed, that's fairly common. Uh, all right, so one of the uh, benefits of having these bed sides that come down is they unlatch and they can fold down completely flat. Now this particular truck, he has wider wheels and tires, so it's not gonna fold down completely flat, but it has these rubber bushings on the front and rear, and they allow the bedside to sit flush with the bed without damaging either the lower part of the bed or the bedsides themselves. Now, if you find bedsides or you find a truck with bedsides that have rust near the bottom, um, they're fairly expensive to ship in from Japan. So um, I would recommend that you just have body work done on them instead of trying to replace them. The rear uh, tailgate, it also comes down. You can have all, four, or all three of the bedsides down at once, uh, which is kind of nice if you want to go flatbed. You can also remove these. So uh, usually there's a 10 millimeter bolt right here in this location. You can pull that 10 millimeter bolt and in this case you can slide it out. And so the whole tail, I'm not gonna remove this one, but you can remove it. Just be careful because sometimes these have been knocked around, uh, the top part of the hinge. If they've been knocked around, they might not just slide right in. So uh, you might have to beat them with a hammer straight just to get them back in. All right, so on the trucks to lower the tailgate, there's a uh, keyhole here. A lot of times you um, need to push in, rotate the key, and this will unlatch from here and you can lower the uh, rear hood cover uh, or the rear engine cover. Uh, with that set on the bands, you'll need to open the hatch and there's a, a little switch or a little lever. You push the lever in, it'll release this. Now these get kind of stiff over time. It's not a big deal. You can push down. Sometimes you got to kind of play with both sides to get them down. Um, first thing I would check on these, look for oil leaks. So a lot of times they're leaking oil um, just below the header. Um, that would be from the edge of the head gasket. I've seen that a couple of times. Uh, it's not a big deal, it's no sweat to do a head gasket on these, but it can be a big job if you're buying one of these for the first time. Uh, you wanna check the distributor and the distributor cover, make sure there's no oil leaks there. Um, you wanna check the timing cover, make sure there's no oil leaks coming out of the timing cover because there's a cam seal and a, a crank seal uh, in those areas that uh, can leak oil. One other oil leak you need to look for is the valve cover gasket. It can leak, it's very easy to change. There's six 10 millimeter bolts and a 12 millimeter uh, ground strap that you can remove. You can slide uh, the valve cover out, change the valve cover gasket, put it back on. Now, if you're gonna do that, I highly recommend finding the wrinkle red valve cover and changing it out just because it looks pretty sweet. Um, you wanna check the motor mount. So this one's actually cracked. This is the most common, uh, motor mount to fail on the sandbar truck. So it's cracked at the bottom. So you'll feel that it'll, it'll uh, idle kind of rough. You'll feel it throughout the entire chassis of the vehicle. Uh, usually if that one's bad, it's made this one go bad as well. So the rear two motor mounts you can purchase and replace. Uh, they're not hard to find. However, if there's a front transmission and engine mount, that one is discontinued by Subaru. It's very difficult to find. Um, but honestly, if you change the rear two, it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to make this thing feel great again. Yeah, so this particular model is a round headlight model. They are glass round headlights, but you can replace these at your local parts store. It's a very common 7-inch uh, headlight, 7-inch glass headlight. Uh, these have been replaced with Wagner ones, but I think Sylvania also makes a, a glass set that fits these, this truck. All this plastic on these, it dries out over time. Uh, you can clean them up with back to black. Don't panic over it, but you'll find a lot of the corners on the sandbar trucks are kind of beat up um, and scratched up. It's like that on most of the K trucks, so uh, it's pretty normal. They're utility vehicles in Japan. Uh, I say utility, they're more so commercial, but uh, keep an eye out for the front of the doors on the sandbar specifically. The, this tab will get bent in. It's pretty common. Uh, it's nothing I would, I would panic about, but um, you can usually grab them with pliers and straighten them back out. Have your paint guy uh, sand it, fill it, and, uh, and shoot it with some fresh paint. So no big deal there. So there's lots of paint chips on the front of uh, sandbars. Uh, that's pretty common. Uh, but the cool thing about the old school paint that comes on the sandbars is usually you can buff it and it comes out really nice. So if it's got kind of a faded look to it, uh, nine times out of 10, you just run a DA buffer over it and it's gonna look super clean again. 
Um, with the exception of the decals that go down the sides of the bands, some of those fade over time. And you can't quite get the color back, uh, but there are a couple companies that have started coming out with the replacement decals. Really on Etsy, look on Etsy, you can find uh, a lot of those. So I believe these replacement decals came from um, YokohamaMotors.net uh, just to clean up the front end of these trucks. So another thing that frequently corrodes is the windshield wipers on these. Uh, you can sand these down and repaint them. Uh, the windshield wipers themselves are pretty normal. You can get those at a parts store. You're not going to be able to look them up underneath the vehicle, but um, it's just it's a it's your standard clip-on style. You just need to get the length of the ones that are on the van or the truck that you're working on. So in this case, this is a 12 millimeter nut to remove these. Um, you can remove these to paint the windshield wipers. I would not paint them on the truck. So you want to look for rust around the corners of the windshield. That's more so a problem with uh, the vans than it is the truck for whatever reason, especially the newer ones with the square headlights. Um, this one's just fine. The antennas pull out on these. A lot of times they're bent like this, so it's kind of funny, um, but it doesn't hurt anything. No one really uses them anymore, so they just kind of keep them pushed in. Um, check the roof for uh, damage, primarily rust. Sometimes uh, debris will sit on the roof or cause it to rust. So make sure there's no big dents, no holes, that kind of thing, because you'll get water inside the cab and, and that'll just begin a never ending process of rust. So the door cards typically have a pocket on the side. This one's ripped off. Uh, you'll see that sometimes. But other than that, the door cards are pretty, pretty nice in this truck. The uh, windshield wiper reels and these door handles, uh, you can get replacements for both of them. Just keep in mind there's a weird clip down in there that you have to use needle nose pliers to remove. Kind of a pain to do. A lot of people use a rag to do it. Um, I still use a flathead or needle nose pliers to do it. The passenger seat flips up like this. Usually there's a, a, a hole underneath. Um, these will pop up. So I, you can pop this up like this and this will slide out. So this is your coolant reservoir your coolant overflow, the vans will have it on the rear of the van inside the hatch, uh, inside the hatch uh, jam. And then your washer fluid fill is also in this area. So if you look down in here, it kind of looks like a battery tray. And that's because it is a battery tray. So on a lot of the models, they'll actually put the battery in this area. On the trucks, it's on the side, inside of a metal battery cover. Now, I don't know where to find replacements for the metal battery covers. Uh, for a lot of the trucks, you can find the plastic ones, but not so much for the metal ones. So if you've got one of these and it's pretty rusty, I highly recommend uh, just kind of sanding it down and trying to refinish it. There's a, a metal uh, battery brace in there as well, holding it in place. There's a, a hinge <clears throat> or two pins on one side and then a bolt on the other side holding it together. So if you undo that bolt, you can get to the battery. Um, I highly recommend leaving that on there uh, so people don't try and steal your battery because it is on the exterior of the truck. This area here, most people don't know this, but this is actually a step for getting in the bed so you can grab this top part of the headache rack, step in here and climb in. Uh, so no one ever told me that when I, I got one of these and then an older Japanese man told me, oh yeah, that's just a step and for us uh, I'd say heavier Americans, I'd say be careful, but I've never seen one of those break, so uh, it's not, not typically an issue, just kind of cool. Especially if you have kids, let them climb in and out of the truck that way. All right, so to start the truck, you're gonna make sure it's in neutral. You don't actually have to press the clutch on these imported uh, manual trucks. There's no clutch safety switch like there is in the United States. There's not a requirement for it. So. This is a five-speed manual. The automatic models you have to be really careful with. Um, a lot of them have powder clutches in them. And the powder clutches, um, they do go bad. Um, and when they do go bad, they go bad. Uh, it's kind of an expensive fix because not many people know how to uh, replace them. Um, and it's fairly difficult. I think there's maybe one video out there on it. If I get one that comes into the shop, I'll try and make a video on it. But. It's a normal uh, five-speed manual, with the exception of uh, this one has an extra low gear. In fact, all the four-wheel drive sandbars I've had have had an extra low gear uh, that's further up from first gear, uh, which is up and to the left. You would only use that when you're 
climbing something very steep or you have a very heavy load in the back and you need to start off from a stop. Uh, it's nothing that you would use in the snow or anything like that. To engage four-wheel drive, you press the switch. A light will come, in, come on on the dash. I do not recommend doing that while the vehicle is, is moving. Uh, these things are pretty old, so you don't want to risk breaking anything in the transfer case. A lot of the K-Truck models have all-wheel drive all the time. This is a selectable four-wheel drive, so if you're looking to get a little better gas mileage uh, when you daily, when uh, you're not necessarily needing four-wheel drive, the Sandboard is probably the route to go for you. It also uh, not only gives you better gas mileage, it's less wear and tear on the drivetrain in general. It's a five-speed, and it's a 660cc engine. Um, you do kind of got to rev it out. Um, they're, they're meant to be revved out. In fact, it talks about that in one of the service manuals I have that, you know, you got to kind of rev the engine out every now and then to, to clean the valves off and such. This one has a tachometer. I think the guy mostly cruises at low RPM in it, which is fine. It's a new engine. I put a, a new engine from Yokohama Motors in this truck. for him. On the trucks and vans, something you want to look for is you want to pop the airbox cover off. This one's a metal one. Sometimes they're plastic. But you want to pop the top off and you want to look down underneath the air filter and make sure there's not a pull of oil. So a lot of times when people get oil changes on these, they overfill the oil. And what it does is it clogs up the entire uh, intake system and it will actually uh, choke these out. It'll make uh, the sandbar stall out. So um, this is a carbureted model. There are fuel injected models. There's also fuel injected supercharged models. So if you have a a supercharged model, you'll actually find the supercharger in this area, and um, they'll be they'll go off of this bracket. I have a separate bracket that goes here, and then there'll be a, there'll be a pipe that comes over into uh, the intake manifold over here. The supercharged models are fuel injected, so you won't have a carburetor on those models. Uh, the fuel injectors uh, they very very rarely go bad, uh, so that's that's a good thing about the fuel injected ones. Uh, additionally, they also they pick up quite a bit more power than the uh, carbureted models.